Now we need to do our inventory coverage calculation, which is going to be nothing more than again, where we add all of these up. So here's the UK. We'll again, look at 12 months of forward looking demand. whatever this is equal to in terms of the inventory level. And that should leave us 2.9, which makes, makes good sense. All right, we'll do the same thing on the other UK SKU, which is gonna be this one here. Again, we'll look at six months of or twelve months of forward-looking demand, and then we'll subtract out whatever that inventory is already at the distribution center. Okay, that leaves us with four point three. And we'll drag this over so it'll stabilize at about two months of cover, which makes sense, equal to our lead time at this particular step of the operation. And we'll repeat that process for Germany. This. And we'll look at the forward looking demand for our periods of cover. And we'll subtract out whatever's already in Germany. And that makes sense, it should be zero because we have nothing currently in inventory this particular location because we have high inventory levels in the market. This. And we'll subtract out whatever's in the market, leaving us with what's at the Packaging site, which again is zero. So these will, as we drag these forward, they'll start to build up and they should stabilize at about two months of cover, which again equates to the lead time we have in the supply chain at this particular operation. Okay, so let's leave that there. Just while we're here, I'll just build this out. And again, this was that row that if I wasn't creating this live and I was in a second version, I think I would probably delete this row, but again, we'll carry it through for completeness. So everything looks nice and neat.